morning, Vienna. I have to do a little bit of a setup before the talk, but we are going to start right away. So basically, what I'm going to talk about today, I'm going to introduce Sami. Sami is, um, you know, the name of an architecture that we are building right now in uh, Samsung at Samsung in order to um, take care of all the data, all the things that are, you know, building up right now connected to the internet. And so Sami is basically a name that doesn't mean anything, but that allows me to just call, you know, this infrastructure that we are building. So beyond, be, beyond uh, an architecture, it's actually uh, an ecosystem that we are trying to build. Today, we have more and more um, you know, objects that are connected. People are predicting that in the next five or six years, there will be billions and billions of objects that are going to talk to the internet and to basically talk back to you somehow. My prediction is actually going to be trillions of objects. Because today, we already have a lot, a lot of those things, right? I don't know if you are familiar with uh, the Fitbit, or the Nest, or the WeSync scale, but all those things are already talking to the internet to you in order to give you back something, to give you back an experience. The issue of all those things is that they are in their own silos today. So they only, you know, see their own world. So what Sami is about is basically to try to share the information between all those different silos. The good thing about being, doing that at Samsung is that we have our own silos. Samsung is a huge company with a lot, a lot of different you know, devices. You may know the phones, the televisions, uh, the, the fridges. I mean, we have basically, you know, everything. And we are organized in silos ourselves. So the challenge is basically to see that we can have those silos talking inside Samsung and outside Samsung. And we start, when we started to, uh, to create this architecture, this ecosystem, we actually wanted, since day one, to open it, to be sure that it's totally open to anybody who wants to come to play with us. Because we believe that, you know, in real life, people don't have only Samsung stuff. And so we want to be sure that all the objects that are going to, you know, come on the market can, if they want to, connect through this ecosystem and play with it. So basically, you need to give a definition to IoT, to Internet of Things. My definition of Internet of Things is data. Why is it data? Because you have to basically collect the data through sensors. You have, after that, you know, to transport the data. You have to, you know, once it's up there in the cloud, to massage it, you know, it's analytics and stuff like that. Then you have to transport it back to the user in order to actuate, to do something for the user, to give back something to the users. And everything is about data. Here, this is just a diagram you know, that shows what Sami does. Again, you know, it's collecting on the bottom all those data. They can come from any of those silos that I was talking about. And then we collect this huge amount of data or we give access to this huge amount of data. I'm not going to go too much into this thing, but I'm going to try to give you a demo later that will basically you know, uh, illustrate that. But if there is one thing to understand about Sami, is that it's something that everybody can join in the way they are today. So they don't have to do the companies that are going to play with us, that are playing with us today, they don't have to change anything about what they are doing. They can continue to collect the data the way they, the way they want, and what we are you know, getting is basically a huge, unstructured, big data infrastructure, right? So we, 
you know, let people to come. There is no friction to join. And um, the only thing that we need to know, uh, Samsung, is basically how is your data organized. Then we can basically, you know, make our own little source and give back some APIs that are going to allow people to play with this data and to be smart about that. What we believe is that we are not smart about those silos. We believe that a lot of people are going to be able to join and to have idea about how to make the, the Nest interacting with our fridges or, you know, the Fitbit interacting with uh, the, the Wissing scale. So we want people to be, you know, smart to do this cross-fertilization, you know, through the silos. And at the end of the day, what we want to focus on is basically on the magical user experience, on something that is incredible, something that you saw in the movies, you know, back in the, in the 80s or something, where stuff was happening just because you were there doing what you were doing. Of course, there is also, you know, a lot of issues potentially, especially when you talk, you know, about big companies like Samsung or Google or something like that, big issues about security, privacy, and stuff like that. So we need to be sure that the data that we collect is actually totally managed and owned by the users. So we'll have to do that. Let me try now to explain a little bit more, you know, what I'm going to try to show later. Again, the idea is that we have, you know, a lot of source of data that we are going to acquire, and we are going to have two passes for those data. We are going to have what I call the real-time pass, which basically is a little bit like a Twitter fire hose, right? So all the data is going to be, you know, going through a pipe, and people who want to, they can query this pipe and see what the data that are collecting, you know, for a specific individual. There is also the historical, the, the historical pass, which is, you know, the one that is all the data that was collected for, that were collected for you in the past. Okay, for all those uh, those things, we are going to have after that APIs in order to. Uh, allow engines that are going to be, uh, you know, decision, machine learning, analytics, whatever you want, that are going to be able to query those data, again, live or historical. And then we are going to loop back to the user or to the services, you know, that, are, that matter to the users. That's what I want to try to show today. So, you know, I have to say that I'm not exactly in the um, settings that I am usually to show the demo. So um, what we are focusing right now is you know, on smart home, smart car, and wellness. So usually when I show the demo, I show it in the context of my home when I am you know, lying down on the couch and watching television. It's not exactly the right you know, uh, thing that I'm doing right now. So, I'm going to have to show a piece of the demo on this phone here, so it might be a little bit difficult you know, to, to see it, but we are going to try. So let's see. Example. All the data that you just, uh, that you just saw there, so let, let me just you know, start my, my phone here again. Don't, don't look at my password. Okay, let's see. Uh, I, need, I need to have my password right. Okay. Um, so, let's see. I'm going to do that. And let me explain a little bit, you know, what I'm doing. So, when I'm in this, uh, in this setting, you know, I'm supposed to... Sorry for... Okay, let's try that. Okay, so, we'll try. Is uh, Nicola in the room? No Nicola in the room? If there is Nicola in the room, I need him to uh, speak English for me because, you know, I don't speak English very well. Thank you. Um. <laughs> Good morning, Nicola. So basically, again, because of the room, because of the you know, current atmosphere, because of the stress, 
you know, I'm not speaking very well, so he will have to speak English for me. He's my, my official English speaker. Um, before I start, the idea, we are going to do a subset of what we are doing with all those data, all those silos that I was talking about. We are going to look at the wellness silo right now, okay? So um, what does that mean? It's going to be you know, a bunch of devices that are going to work for me. And actually, I'm going to need the, the slide here. Okay. So this is basically me with all my devices you know, that I'm carrying around all the time. But today, I have only you know, a few of them. So I'm carrying a watch, I'm carrying a, um, a patch, a Vital, Vital Connect patch. This is basically an ECG thing. I have a Fitbit pedometer here, and I have um, a Wissing scale just in the back there. So it's going to be part of the demo. Nicola, can you talk to Sami for me and say, uh, you know what to say? Hmm, try again. Hey, Sammy. Sammy is not responding, of course. You know, I mean, if you want to do a, a live demo, I mean, uh, it's not going to work. So let's see. Wait a sec. Um, okay. okay, try again. Hey, Sammy. No, don't don't shout. Just do it. Hey, Sammy. Hey, Sammy. How am I doing? Hmm. I'm sorry, it's going to work eventually, you know. We, we need a, a minute or so. Okay, let's say it again. Hey, Sammy. Hmm. Hey, Sammy. I'm sorry. Okay, let me do something. So, maybe I need to, you know, where are my actual demo? you know, closes, so let's try that. <sighs> okay. Okay, I think that I took something with me here, that's fine. I'm going to do it. Okay, so we are going to try again. You know, it's going to work now. I feel it. You feel it? Okay. Ah, shoot. <laughs> okay, let's see. Uh, let's suppose that it worked, you know, and uh, that uh, we said, hey, Sami, you can go back there, that's fine. And, um, and so what it's supposed to do, you know, I'm supposed to be in front of my couch, you know, talking to this thing. There is ambient recognition, so not only, you know, all the stuff that I'm wearing, you know, is recognized, uh, is giving data for me, but also when I'm talking to it, actually, it's supposed to recognize what I'm saying. You know, we did speech recognition for the past 20 years, but <laughs> still not working very well. So, anyway, um, okay, let's see, let's hope, you know, that it's working now. Uh, I got Sami you know, doing something, I'm wearing this patch. Uh, I have all those data now that you can you know, see there maybe. I'm going to leave it on the, on the table for you if you want, so I won't you know, interfere with you. So I put it there. And this is basically, you know, so we can, we can have the, the phone on the screen there, it would be great. Oh, well, there, that's fine. So here you see my ECG, you see my steps, and you see my weight. So by the way, I'm going to, <coughs> I'm going to weigh myself on the scale here. You're all going to know that I'm more than 100 kilos. That's fine. You know, okay, so the scale now took my new weight. I think that the, you know, the dinner last night was good. And um, I'm going to run around a little bit <laughs> just to show you that it's actually, you know, real data that is coming in. Oops. Hola. I think that the, the guys are not going to be happy with me here. That's fine. So, running. You should see my heart, you know, going up, hopefully, <laughs> because I'm not going to do that for too long. Okay. Yeah, it's a performance, yeah. Okay, so what are we doing? It's going up? Yeah, it's going up, okay. All right, 122, yeah, I'm dead. Okay, so just to show you that it's a lot of data. The ECG patch, actually, you know, is giving a piece of data every eight milliseconds. You know, it's 20 gig of data a day, just for that. So when I was talking about big data, it's really, really big data, right? 
My weight, see, I mean, it went down last night with the scale that was here, you know, that I just, you know, used right now. It's going to take a couple of minutes, you know, to go up and to do something and to come back here and we're going to see that I took a little bit of weight. Steps. I don't know why, you know, it's not showing you, but that's fine. Ah, okay. So you got the idea. It's basically gathering a lot of data, you know, about me. It knows a lot about me for, for my history, for all the things that I did before. And in this particular context, you know, it's gathering the data. But when you look at that, who cares? I mean, I care because I'm a geek, you know, so I like to see all those graphs and all those things. But real people, this is not what they want. I mean, they don't care about all those graphs, complicated graphs and stuff, you know. What they want is meat, right? They want something that is going to be interesting to them. So I think we are done with, the, with this part. Let's go back to, the, to my clicker here. Here it is. And let's go back to the slides. So we saw that, you know, this is the, this is the devices that I have. And basically, this is the same graph that you saw before, but with the very specific, you know, things that I used here. So I, have, I am the people. I have a Vital Connect patch. I have a Fitbit um, pedometer. I have a Wissing scale that I used. It did acquire the data. And here we just looked at the real time um, pipe, OK, pipeline. And what it does basically, you know, it just gathers the data. And we can display it the way we displayed it, or we can be smart about it. So we have one of our partners, which is called Lark, which is basically you know, trying to make sense of the different data that is coming you know, together there. In this particular case, for wellness, for fitness. So here, Lark is basically looking at this pipe, looking at all those parameters, and it's going to send me, after a while, when you know, it's, it's good enough, when it understood you know, all the data, it's going to send me some advices. Today, because of the you know, configuration that you have, we're not going to be able to, to, to hear the beautiful voice of Lark. But basically, Lark is supposed right now to tell me something like, OK, buddy, I mean, you did a lot of walking. You did a lot of you know, running around. But you still you know, uh, put something like two kilos or one kilo more you know, on the scale. So Lark is going to give me the advice to you know, eat a little less and work a little bit more. And this is, at the end, what we want to know. This is this meat that I was talking about. So basically, you know, if IoT is about, it's all about data, you know, big data is necessary. Yes, we need the big data. We need to collect a lot of data. But we need to collect a lot of data to do only one thing, to do small data. This is what people, you know, really want. They want to only have some advices that are good for them. So basically, at Samsung right now, what we are doing, we have this 100 million fund that is you know, accelerating companies that, are, that want to play with us, basically, that want to play with SAMI. And the two domains that we are looking at right now are the inertia sensors and actuators, so something to collect the data and to display the data, potentially, and the brains, the things that I call the brains, which are you know, those machine learning, decision, and analytics engine. So if you want to play with us, come to see me. Thank you very much.